there are several feet that will work when you use the bias binders because the foot itself is not part of the bias binder. Uh, it depends, you have to try all three. This one is a clear foot. I use the clear foot because I can see where my needles are going easier. There's also this one, it's called the covered chain foot and they've removed all this extra wideness of the foot and they've also shortened it. A shorter foot will go around a curve much easier. This one is, is much, much shorter than both of them. And so it's called the curved foot. So try all three and find out which one you feel gives you more control in going around the curve. I also, when I set up my fabric and have my curve already cut, I like to use one of these little chalk markers and give myself a marking to show me where the curve is gonna start. Here it looks nice and straight and I see my curve starts right in here. I like to just put a mark out here beyond the foot so I know whenever my foot is getting up there close to that curve, I know where I have to start dealing with that curve. And this is optional. I just find, I find it easier to start my curve when I know right where the curve is starting. Next, we're gonna work with the bias binders. And the one that we're gonna use in this segment is called the single fold bias binder. And it's the 28 millimeter width. One of the challenges of using the bias binders, whether they be the single fold or the double fold, is keeping your stitches on the bias all the way around a curve. You can see you can start out on the curve, but many of us will wander off of the curve as we go around. Well, there is a trick for staying on the bias all the way around the curve like this. So that's what we're going to do and in this segment. Also, to prepare your bias, it will tell you in the instructions for different sizes of the binders of how wide to cut your bias. For the 28 millimeter, it says to cut it one and eight inches across. You need to start with like an arrowhead point to get it started in the binder. I just fold my binding in half like this and take a pair of scissors and just cut an angle tip like that and then I have my little arrowhead starter. So we're gonna take this part right here and insert it into the binder. Okay, when you start, start with your needles up on the binding and watch as you go on. Now see right here, see this little mark? We need to keep everything nice and flat right in this area here. As you go in, I kind of watch the needles and watch this area. Here I'm getting close to the curve. See my mark? Now as you get up there and you start into the curve, don't try to pull this all in at once. Just let it kind of feed in nice and gentle, but watch where the needles are going in the, in the binding back here. I'm gonna reach up here and cut this little thread away so that it'll get out of the picture sooner. And as we curve through here, watch the needles. And as they start to get close to the edge of the binding as you're curving in, you need to not let them fall off. Watch, and when you get close, I like to stop with my needles down. Now watch when I lift up the presser foot. It'll release the fabric back here. See that little bit of move? That's all you need, it's just that little bit. Work your way around as it starts getting close to the edge of the binding again. Stop with your needles down. See it, it kind of bumps up a little bit. Lift this up and see it lay out nice and flat. It's very gentle. Don't try it in a hurry. I'm getting closer to the edge and you can kind of see it bunching up right there. Lift it up and see it lay flat. Work your way around gently. It's not a hurry up and go thing. See it release? When you're finished, you'll see this little extension of the bias back here that's not folded. Because this is bias, you can trim it nice and close with a pair of embroidery scissors and you do not have to worry about it raveling. Plus, you don't have the extra bulk.